Good morning. I'm Carol Ann Logue with the uh, University of Central Florida, representing the Team Orlando Central Florida Tech Grove, which is the initiative being stood up in a collaborative partnership intermediary agreement between University of Central Florida Research Foundation and the Naval Air Warfare Center Training Systems Division, along with the other three services that are here in Orlando as part of Team Orlando. We are so excited that you've joined us today for the inaugural Tech Grove Connect in partnership with NTSA. We are going to be doing this on a monthly basis and giving you some behind the scenes and in different insights into some activities in modeling simulation training and human performance, other areas related to what we're doing here in Metro Orlando in Central Florida. To put Tech Grove in context in the modeling simulation and training community in the Department of Defense, I'm going to introduce Diana Teal, who is with Not TSD, to tell you just briefly how Tech Grove fits into the ecosystem here in our modeling simulation and training community. Diana? Thanks, Carol Ann. Hi. So I am Diana Teal and I am with Not TSD, um, the Naval Air Warfare Center Training Systems Division here in Orlando, Florida. I'm the Outreach Director. I'm also the Team Orlando Director. And so to understand a little bit about the tech grab and just to take a few moments of time to describe this to you, we have this very vibrant ecosystem in Central Florida all around modeling simulation and training. So part of that, Team Orlando is kind of in the middle of that. And that's all four services because we're co-located right here in Research Park, all in modeling, simulation, training, and human performance business space. So we've been working together for a while and, and combining efforts because we understand we're stronger together. And we work with industry, academia, and our local government to make this a vibrant area for us in this in, in modeling, simulation, and training. And so then recently... Navy has come up with some new authorities or expanded authorities, and we've stood up these tech bridges. So not TSD, the Central Florida Tech Bridge is one of those tech bridges. And that's an enabler for us because that allows us to connect directly to the highest levels of the Navy. And then we've, with that and with these new authorities, we've been able to stand up this physical presence that we're calling the Tech Grove. And the reason that this is all related is because the Tech Grove is not just a Navy thing, because we're a part of Team Orlando, and we understand that the Tech Grove could benefit all of us. So the Tech Grove is for all four services, and we're all using this as a space, kind of like what y'all have seen with, I'm sure, AppWorks and SoftWorks and DefenseWorks, all of the works. So we're not as cool and have a works, but we're, we're better, right? We've got a Tech Grove, and we're keeping that local um well, ecosystem where the, the synergy is going on here, right? Going with the Grove thought. So this Tech Grove is going to be all of our space. We want all of y'all to be there and we want to be innovating, collaborating and accelerating with everyone. So hopefully that kind of sets the baseline for what it is that we're attempting to achieve with this Tech Grove. And thank you, Caroline, for those few moments. Thank you, Diana. One more a little bit more information about Tech Grove just briefly before we move on to our presenters. We are open virtually. We really just this year, 2021, have started kicking off a couple of different series of events. The physical space will soon be ready. And once circumstances allow, we will be starting to actually bring people into the facility. But for a while, we are going to be virtual. Check our LinkedIn page. We'll keep reminding you of that. We'll put that in the chat. So that's right now where we're publishing a lot of the activities and news about Tech Grove. As we thought about what do we want to do for our first Tech Grove Connect, this is such an amazing channel to be able to get information out and get some insights, have some dialogue to learn some interesting things about this community in modeling simulation and training. Many of you who are attending attended the ITSIC this year. As you know, because it was virtual, the tutorials, the papers, a lot of the information is still accessible right now. We thought, what a great idea to look at those best papers from the ITSIC and do a deeper dive into one of those that really represents the collaboration and the partnerships that are taking place here in 
Orlando, through Team Orlando, and explore a little bit more beyond the technology. We looked at those papers that were awarded best paper status in the various categories, zeroed in really quickly on the emerging technologies, emerging concepts and innovative technology category. And to our delight, the team behind that paper was one of our very own star companies in this space, Design Interactive, Dr. Kay Stanny and her team, with this really amazing collaboration with the Office of Naval Research, a couple of other companies, and with uh, sailors themselves to tackle a problem and a need that actually exists in absolutely every industry. So today we have a team, you've seen the information on the announcement about this, and we came in and saw the slide. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time giving you the bios and the introductions that is available elsewhere. So I wanna turn it over to Dr. Kay Stanley to take you behind the scenes of this collaboration and why it was so successful, how it worked, maybe lessons that they learned that it didn't work as she and her team and collaborators tell you their story. Dr. Stanley. Well, thank you, Carol Ann, and thank you, Diane. Um, we really are excited to be part of this inaugural um, kickoff of the podcast for uh, Tech Grove Connect, and um, we, we're really excited to tell, to tell you and share with you our story today. Um, so are we going to move to the first slide? I don't see the slides up. Yeah, Can I think they're the switched. Yeah. Pardon? There we go. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna be talking to you about today is a knowledge extraction tool that we developed. And um, oh, can we back up one, please? Thank you. And we have a really great group together today and they represent different uh, people who came together to help collaborate to create the solution that we have. It was a very unique collaboration, one of the um, most widespread collaborations that I have ever had the opportunity to be a part of. And so here you see the different individuals that are, are with us today. Um, and uh, they all played a special role in providing either the seller's point of view or the customer's point of view or the organization and enterprise's point of view. So we're going to dive into what we were developing and then really speak a lot to the collaboration behind the development effort. Next slide, please. So two main factors brought us together today. Um, the first one was an opportunity, and that opportunity was to use immersive technology, such as augmented reality, to transform the enterprise and achieve you know, what we've never seen before in terms of unparalleled gains in productivity, training effectiveness, and more. Yet, if you look at this graph on the right-hand side, which is from Gartner's Emerging uh, Technologies Hype Cycle, what you see is that for many years, the enterprise grappled with exactly how to leverage AR technology to achieve such gains. In particular, AR was floundering in what Gartner calls the trough of disillusionment. And as you see here on the graph, the AR technology was in the trough from 2011 through actually even beyond 2017. And we just couldn't determine how exactly to use this technology. So in 2016, DII decided to be a catalyst for moving AR technology toward what Gartner likes to call the plateau of productivity, where the technology can experience mass adoption and really transform the enterprise. We reviewed a number of challenges that enterprises were facing and narrowed in on one, what is called the silver tsunami or the aging wear, uh, workforce, where baby boomers will be exiting the workforce in droves. At the same time as we have this loss in workforce, we also have enterprises contending with millennial job hoppers who regularly transition between jobs every few years. And then you couple that with factors that are inherent to the enterprise itself, and that is a great deal of 21st century emerging technologies and systems, and very few of the workforce had the skills necessary to operate those systems. So taken together, DI identified an opportunity here for augmented reality to fill, and that was to enable the enterprise to capture the knowledge of the baby boomers who were leaving the workforce and use that knowledge to automatically generate job performance aids to train the new set of workforce people coming in and get them up to speed quickly. So we set out to develop what we call Extract, 
And the next thing we did was turn to the SBIR program to see if we could find funding to help build this capability. Next slide, please. And I will turn it over now to Dr. Victoria Claypool so she can dive into the details of that development effort. Hey there, thanks Kai. So like Kay said, we, we really had this, this great thought, this great idea. And to really make that dream a reality, we, we had to find a way to fund it, right? So what we what we first did is we we looked at all the SIVRs that are out there, the SIVRs, the SCTRs, all these other types of contract funding vehicles to see are there topics that are already out there that really align with what we see, with the vision that we see and the way that we can move this innovative AR technology forward and really, really empower you know, our military, our sealers, our soldiers, um, and really give them these next generation knowledge capture tools or JPAs. So we did find a few actually, um, and one of those was quite a few years ago now, um, under the direction of Dr. Ray Perez, who eventually became our TPOC and has been our, our primary TPOC um, since I think 2017, the year's a little blurry for me there. Um, and Dr. Ray Perez uh, will be joining us at, at some point today, um, as long as he can get logged in. So he'll be able to, to speak to that on his side as well. But we really reached out to him during that SIBR open communication period, right? So for, for those of you that have done SIBRs or maybe are new to the SIBR process, there's this open communication period where you can reach out to your TPOX, ask questions, pick their brains, and really see if your vision is aligning with their vision for their SIPR program. Now, once that communication period closes, they do have the, the open portal, um, but sometimes that, that open portal is a, is a bit less responsive because it's more you know, text-based or, or email-based, whereas you know during the open communication period, you can just pick up the phone and call and have a nice conversation. So that's what we did with, with Dr. Perez, actually. You know, we just picked up the phone and said like, hey, here's our vision, here's what we see, here's where we think we can go. Does that align with what you see? Does that align with you know your understanding you know of the DoD of you know Office of Naval Research, et cetera? Um, and and fortunately, it did. Right, we we were all aligned with with what we really saw the future of this could be. So we submitted a few cyber proposals, um, including one of the new accelerated topics programs. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this program, it's brand brand new. They've only actually done, I believe one round of it, um, and it's an accelerated topic. So instead of going you know, from a, a phase one to a phase two to a matching phase two option, you do do the phase one and, and phase two period, but the contract vehicle um, is much, much shorter. So the phase two is actually 18 months, um, 1.6 million versus a typical phase two, which is like 24 months, 1 million. So um, it's shorter time with more money to really accelerate your technology forward. So, you know, again, we really sought out these funding opportunities that aligned, um, you know, with the solution that we had in mind. So like I said, we were initially funded by the Office of Naval Research. So we went through the traditional cyber process at first where you go through the phase one. And in our phase one, we really spent the time there on just doing the conceptual design and showing here's how this very, very strong design could be translated into a fully functioning system and then use the phase two for the prototype development of that system. Now we were fortunate to, to also receive um, matching funds. So we were able to secure um, our cyber matching funds options through our collaborations. And this is what we'll spend a majority of the time talking about today. But I did wanna mention it briefly here because these collaborations are so, so, so beneficial, not just from the product and solution development side, but also for, for on the, the contract vehicle funding side, where you can try to, to leverage these collaborations in order to get those cyber matching funds. So because of our relationship with um, PEO carriers and Kelly Schneider, who Kelly Schneider is um, currently retired, he is no longer with us, but his replacement, Miss Becky Woods, who I believe is on the call or, or is jumping in and out of it, um, really fostered and facilitated this matching funds process and getting us connected to Cape Henry Associates, who Mr. Um, Neil Jeffress is on the phone representing them. Yep, hi Neil. <laughs> and so we were able to collaborate together, you know, to go through this cyber matching process. 
So again, initially funded um, by ONR, used that SIPR pro process to get the phase one, the phase two, and the matching funds options. And now we're heading into that phase three of commercialization section. So again, the, the main point that I wanted to bring out here is that these collaborations are so, so critical from you know, solution ideation to design to implementation to, to really commercialization of our solutions so we can really bridge that tech gap and, and get it into the hands of our end users, in this case, you know, our sailors. So um, I'll just very, very quickly just give you an overview of, of what extract is, right? Because I know that's kind of what we're talking about today with, with the, the extract um, best paper for ECIT. So I'm not going to go into to too much detail. Um, the, like um, Renee and, and Carol Ann mentioned, those papers are still available on the VITSIC website. The presentation is also still available on the VITSIC website. If you're having trouble accessing it, you can always just reach out to me, um, either through email or LinkedIn, and I'm happy to send them to you as well. And that paper goes into pretty extensively what extract is, the process we take, and, and what the results are. So I'll just give you a high-level version here. So extract is an AR-based, augmented reality-based um, operational support tool that really elicits tribal knowledge in order to automatically generate those job performance aids that are ultra, ultra critical for our sailors. So it really starts first by capturing expertise. It empowers our organizations to really maintain their tribal knowledge um, during transition. So whether sailors are transitioning to a, you know, another area or, or they're, they're leaving or they're retiring, any time that transition occurs, either you know through retirement or other means, we're losing that institutional knowledge. We're having a knowledge gap. Um, and really with all this technology we have today, there's, there's no reason to have these knowledge gaps anymore. So because of that, you know, we conceptualized Extract and it's this really, really efficient and easy to use um, knowledge elicitation tool. So it does combine some aspects of you know, very traditional web-based technologies and more of those innovative AR technologies um, to really bridge this knowledge gap. So um, you know, our, our maintainers, our technicians, our sailors, they really just start in the web portal, fill out some very basic information, um, kind of form their mental models. If it's like a troubleshooting process, they can start making their visual tree or their flow chart and answer just some very, very basic questions about what the process or the problem or the procedure is. And then we take all of that data that they've provided and we send it over to our AR application. And in that AR application, we the system itself says, okay, go to your actual maintenance environment, let's get contextually relevant, and you're actually gonna go through this procedure. And as you go through, we're gonna ask you questions about it. So it's just like a cognitive scientist is kind of over their shoulder, you know, really diving down into that knowledge elicitation process of like, well, what are you sensing? What are you looking for? What are you hearing? Why are you doing this, the test this way? Is there a different way you can do the test? And the system prompts them and really provides these progressive deepening questions to elicit a breadth of explicit, implicit, and that really, really hard to articulate tacit knowledge. And because they're in that contextually relevant environment, we're really priming their memory and making it just so much easier for them to provide all of their knowledge instead of just setting them in front of a computer and say, okay, type out everything that you think you know, we really have our AR systems really prompt and guide and pull out those threads of, of tacit knowledge. Once all of that knowledge um, is captured, um, our system on the back end actually automatically reformats it into a job performance aid that is AR based that another sailor or maintainer or whoever could just put the headset on their head go out into the maintenance environment, execute that procedure or troubleshooting process, have those expert tips and tricks and execute you know, the, the maintenance activity just like the expert was over their shoulder. So they could watch those first person pictures or videos or audio notes and say like, okay, ET1 Barry said to do it this way. This is how he did it. Let me, you know, let me follow along, let me mimic him. Or here's what he said an alternative approach was to do this test if the way I'm doing it isn't quite working out correctly, um, et cetera. So they really do get those really, really great tacit knowledge tips and tricks 
that help them perform like experts or like their expert is right over their shoulder. Now we've also done um, some stuff um, in-house and taken that knowledge and turned it into IMI level four training. So AR based, um, AR based uh, like a training solution or a training system. And we've actually used these like on the CVN 78 within carts. Um, you know, again, it's, it's an AR based training system so they can kind of take it anywhere and use it however they want. But the good thing is, is that all of the information that we get from that extract process from them going through extract really allows us to develop training for all levels of proficiency. It gets the basic facts, the basic knowledge, all the stuff that a novice person would need. And it also gets, you know, those, those alternative approaches, those, you know, more expertise type um, questions and answers that we can develop training for someone who is more proficient. Um, and actually, I see one Diaz who is on the call today. She's actually been through these training scenarios. A few of them, I think. I think she's done some that we've done for um, MCMS um, and for pods. And she'll be doing some more um, actually next week. We're coming to visit her next week to do um, to do some more testing and demonstrations of extract in our training scenarios. And like I said, we've we've used all of this on ship and within carts. Um, for those that, of you that don't know what carts is, I know I've mentioned it a few times. It's the Carrier Advanced Reconfigurable Training System. I mean, it was developed by Kate Henry. So if you have any questions on that, Neil has all of the answers, everything and more that I know. I know just enough about it to make it sound like I know stuff. <laughs> but Neil has all of the answers to carts. Um, but carts is this really cool. Um, high velocity learning environment. It's essentially a reconfigurable trailer um, stationed at Norfolk Naval Base. It's actually like 200 feet from the McDonald's, which apparently is a big selling point in the Navy. You can see the McDonald's from the carts trailer, but you can also see the ship from the carts trailer, which is really cool. You can see the CVN 78 um, right from that carts unit. So sailors that need to come off and do refresher training can do it right at their home base. They don't have to travel. They don't have to go on TDY. They can just come off the ship, go into carts, get their refresher training, have lunch at McDonald's apparently, come back into carts, finish up their refresher training, and then go back on ship the next day. They don't have to leave their families for a week or so at a time to get this refresher training that they need. So we've used um, both extract, so eliciting the knowledge within extract, um, within carts, and I'll explain how we did that with our collaborations in just a minute but also going through the, the job performance aids and those training scenarios within CARTS as well. So, um, so Extract um, and our training scenarios that we've developed from Extract have both been demonstrated at a technology readiness level of six. So um, it's, it's pretty, you know, it, it's farther than a prototype and, and we're currently working right now with Neil, IC1 Diaz, um, Becky Woods and, and all the other folks here to get it up to a TRL eight or nine. So that's what extract is. Um, I know that was kind of, kind of a lot. So, and I'm just quickly, quickly checking, checking the chat to see if there are any questions and there aren't so far. Been to that McDonald's many times. Um, I have as well, um, more times than I would have liked, but uh, it's either McDonald's or the pizza. <laughs> and that's kind of our two options when we're, when we're there. So um, we meet at the McDonald's pretty frequently. <laughs> So like I said, this collaboration is, or this presentation more so, is really, really all about collaboration. And like Kay said, I think, well, for me personally, but I'm, I'm still early career as you guys can probably tell, but I think most of the people on this call or on this webinar will, will also agree with me in saying that this is the most I've seen um, industry, government, DOD, all of these people come together and collaborate on, on kind of one product, one project, one vision, um, more so than, than I've seen before. I used to be at the Air Force Research Lab um, before I came to DI, and I've never seen anything quite this extensive um, when I was there. It, it's really been a really humbling experience for me personally to work with all these industry leaders. Um, so I'm excited to really share with you uh, the results of that collaboration and, and really how it fostered. And I know there's a lot of people on the call. So if, if you want to interject and interrupt me at any time, um, please feel free <laughs> to do so. I tend to just talk and talk and talk. So um, please be my guest. So like I mentioned, uh, we first got connected with the Office of Naval Research through Dr. Ray Perez. 
Um, and he has really been a great, great, great facilitator, really from, from start to finish to, to where we're at now. He was really the first person who connected us with PEO carriers. So um, PEO carriers or the program executive office for, for the, the carriers program, um, they already kind of had their own little collaboration, not little, it's actually quite extensive collaboration unit going on where um, they called it a triad. And this triad was really three main folks. It was Cape Henry Associates, who again, Neil is the representative for there, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and then um, CACI. So these three companies had really already came together um, under Kelly Schneider's leadership at PEO Careers, and were already working really well together to solve some of the Navy's problems. So when Ray introduced us to Kelly um, at you know, O&R to PEO Careers, we were pretty much like brought into the family. And that's really what it felt like. Um, if any, if I had any issues while I was there, if I had any questions while I was there or when I got back home, you know, Neil's metaphorical office was always open for me to pester him and ask questions and say like, hey, what do you think about this? Or this is kind of the direction we're thinking, you know, does this align with your understanding, et cetera. So it was, at first it was really being brought into this great collaboration unit and really made to feel like a family. And I do remember when we first started way back, you know, in 2018, when we were really finalizing our conceptual design of what extract could be, you know, we would go up to the Cape Henry office, we would, um, we would sit with Neil with other people from HII, um, and CACI and Kelly Schneider from PEO Carriers, and actually sketch stuff out together on this whiteboard. Um, or on you know one of the whiteboards that we had, and we say, okay, you know this is kind of what we're thinking. What do you think about this? This is kind of the process that we think we need to take from a cognitive science standpoint, right? Like I'm a cognitive psychologist. I can tell you all about cognitive load, information processing, all of that fun stuff. I can't tell you what our sailors experience on a day to day basis. I don't know that. So Neil and Kelly would come in and say, like, yeah, that's great. But here's the things you need to consider from the sailor's perspective. Here are the things that you need to understand from their organization's perspective, from the way that things function um, in the Navy and the military as a whole. And I remember one day we were talking and I was like, okay, we've got extract figured out. Here's how we capture that knowledge and here's how we send it off. And they said, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean send it off? I'm like, well, you know, people got to use it. Like, that's, that's why we're capturing it. Pe people need to use it. And they're like, no, 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 ma'am. Someone has to approve this. We cannot just suck knowledge out of a, an expert sailor and send it off to everyone in the world. Like someone has to be here to approve that. And I was like, oh yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Doesn't really, make, doesn't really apply from the cognitive science perspective because that's the world I was in, but it definitely makes sense from a Navy organization perspective. So Neil and Kelly were like, you have to have some type of capability where either the OEM or leadership or someone can review that extracted knowledge and make sure that it's technically accurate, it's safety compliant, you know, we're not, we're not showing people things that are unsafe um, and that, you know, there's no accidental confidential or classified information in it. We, we have to review it before it gets sent out. Um, and really just from being in the room with these folks who are so, so knowledgeable about the Navy, about the sailors, about the organizational processes, we developed a whole new capability that wasn't even on our roadmap. And we have that capability now where an expert goes through, you know, elicits their knowledge, and then it sends that data package to someone external to them to review it and approve it before it can be sent off to the enterprise. So that's just one great example of, you know, how this collaboration again, not only provided us great personal information, but also really shaped our solution and how we could truly, truly empower our sailors. I know that again, that was a lot, but <laughs> I'll let other people chime in if they want. I'd love to hear from um, Petty Officer Diaz, who's on with us today, uh, because she was really working at the ship level, the sailor level. Sure. And, uh, yeah. Tell us about your experience in working. Sure. At Can you hear me? First of all, I just want to make sure before I begin. Sure. Uh, so yes, yes uh, extract has been a very interesting 
development to see get implemented and being an IC man on the Ford, I personally did not work on MCMS, which is an IC based system, but it's a combat system. And I was from air department. So being able to learn about that system, utilizing extract, that's already beneficial to me personally, but I can see this being as a amazing tool for the fleet in them learning um, like Victoria said, from S prior SMEs without having to rely on them physically being there and giving this information, you know, one on one. Uh, uh, many people can have that resource and again, not have to rely on physically having that person there because that's, you know, of course, mm -hmm. always not not possible. So it's it's really good. And again, I saw the MCMS one and not having much of a background on it, I really want to use that to just further my career and hopefully go back to one of the Ford class carriers and be become an MCMS um, technician or you know operator or whatnot. And I think having that knowledge is better than just getting it from a textbook or from a you know a tech manual <laughs> or from verbal somebody trying to communicate and explain it to me verbally. I can actually see it 3D and go through the components and learn it. And it's just an amazing resource to see get developed. So, thank you for that. And of I, course, I just through all of this from all of you, the the impact on each of you and your organizations of what you've learned and experienced from each other. For example, being an ICE man, and, and you've already shared personally how it's impacted you, but by having this kind of exposure to companies that are developing solutions for you as a sailor, how has that changed your perspective of what industry does? It, you know, I didn't expect it when I first learned about it. You know, I, I did have a lot of questions like, how did this be, you know, come to development, I guess. And, and I'm happy that they saw that there was a need for something like this, because again, you know, sailors, um, even just in the, in the current, you know, um, the current world, we still rely on more tech manuals and, you know, written things and PDFs and 2D, you know, two dimensional things we're looking at. And you would think with the technology available today, we would have more 3D resources and things like that, that, that could just walk us through from, you know, the beginning to the end of a procedure. And you can actually see mm -hmm. what to do instead of relying so much on deciphering, you know, this written tech manual and, and having so many questions. So I'm just happy that they saw that there was a need for that and are trying to help us, you know, make it easier for us to, you know, work in our fields, just make our lives easier to get the job done and the mission done. Captain Hill, who is the commanding officer of NOC TSD here in Orlando, has posed a question for you, mm -hmm. Betty Officer Diaz. Yes. What other, what similar training capabilities do you see a need for at the deck plate level? For using yeah. extract, yeah, I, I mean, it could be, it general. could be for anything and from, you know, a simple job to a more complex job. And I mean, it would be helpful for more complex jobs. I, I like I said, I was an IC man on the Ford and I was in air department and worked in the, ended up working with the email system and that system in itself, anything that can be provided again, besides tech manuals, you know, can be an amazing resource because that's a very complicated system and the more detail help we get the better so i i would love to see more of extract being implemented just for the email system thank you very much mm -hmm. neil if we could have you chime in here we had a little conversation the other day about how cape henry as a company has been affected by being part of this collaboration and this tool and what you see the potential being because of this collaboration and the development of extract for ONR or beyond. What did you get out of this? Not hearing you, Neil. Not yet.
You're not muted, but we're not hearing you for some reason. So while we're waiting, Victoria, Dr. Stanny, Coop, Curie. Yeah, so there's actually a, a question that was that was just posted in the regular chat, and I was working on answering it. I think. Ah, okay. So the question was, does extract material become a part of the schoolhouse curriculum, you know, blending the learning approach by SME's instructors while teaching new maintainers their craft? And that's an excellent, excellent question. Um, and one that I personally love, um, as you guys can tell, I'm all about the science and learning and actually learning and teaching was one of my first loves before I kind of came into the sector. So that's something we have been actively exploring from day one, right? How do we this a reach back solution where the things that our sailors are learning in the field every day get brought back into that very formalized training training curriculum, right? Because we know that there's there's this time lapse between here's how the formal training curriculum is developed, it's been out, it's been vetted, it's been approved, we've been teaching it. We have a whole now brand new system that we don't have training curriculum for. What's going on? Pods is a perfect example of that. There actually isn't formalized training curriculum. Um, at the A and C school levels yet because it's so new. So we really do need something that provides that reach back capability to take all of our lessons learned or to take this new knowledge gained in the field and funnel it back into our formalized training. So we've been we've been connected with Netsy um, with Michelle Harrison at Netsy specifically, and we're trying and trying and trying to really to provide that capability. We just haven't gotten there yet. It is definitely um, one capability that is on our, our personal roadmap for how we see taking extract, um, not necessarily to the next level, but leveraging it to provide some additional capabilities and taking it back into the ANC schools is, is definitely one of those. So that's a great question. Thank you. There's also another question that was submitted uh, by Daniel. Congratulations on the collaboration. Nice uh, use of uh, this. How do we know that the system works? What are the measures of performance and learning that show it makes a difference? And that's a key. Yeah. Point, right? so, so great question. So and I, I can talk to some preliminary data. Um, I'm actually coming to the ship, um, to the CVN 78 and to carts uh, in like three days. <laughs> it's what feels like three days. It's uh, next Tuesday to do some additional testing. So great question. Um, and it is a, a two part answer. So how do we know that the system works? So there's multiple multiple parts of the system. Part of it is, is it actually extracting knowledge? And then is that knowledge that we're turning into a JPA performance, right? So kind of, kind of two parts of the system, two different people we're supporting. So the first one I'll get into a little bit. And again, there's tons of detail in the, the ITSIC paper of how we know that extract actually works. We used extract with um, with sailors, and I'm kind of combining data sets because we've done additional testing since the extract or the ITSIC paper was released. So we tested extract um, on the CVN78 with MCMS maintainers and with pods maintainers. We've also tested it um, within carts, and I'll talk about that collaboration um, after this, in with pods maintainers as well. And so we kind of, we've taken all of that data and have comparative analyses to see what is the quantity and quality of the knowledge extracted and how does that compare to the available technical manuals because that's all they have right now. For one of the procedures we worked with, they have a 15 page MRC and that is it. That is the only documentation they have for one of these pods procedures because it's so new. Um, so we really looked at that and saw, okay, what type of knowledge are we getting? Are we getting explicit? Are we getting implicit? Are we getting tacit? Categorize the knowledge that we've captured and then ran a comparative analysis against the available technical resources that the sailors have. So that's how we first determined, does extract work? Is extract actually capturing expertise? Um, and then the results from that short answer is yes. And like I mentioned, you know, more information is in that it's sick paper. So then what is the measure of performance and learning that shows that it makes a difference. And again, this is also kind of a, a two-part, a two-part response because we have the JPA and we also have those IMI level four training scenarios that we develop from the um, extract knowledge. 
So for those training scenarios, I can actually share a paper that was presented at the Fleet Maintenance and Modernization Symposium. Um, and in that paper, we detailed how we captured immediate learning gains, so from pre and post test exposure. And it was an average of a 32% um, delta in immediate learning gains. So the things that went through these training scenarios um, performed 32% better or had a 32% learning gain um, from pre to post test. So at least in the short term, again, this is preliminary data, in the short term, um, those immediate learning gains, we are seeing a pretty significant difference. On the JPA side, that is one of our newest capabilities, and I only have anecdotal data to share with you for that one, because like I said, we're, we're going and testing um, next week. So anecdotally, what we're seeing is, is this JPA working? Um, from our initial testing sessions, um, we've had qualitative interviews with our sailors, and from those, they have indicated that one, having that JPA on um, that job performance aid that has, you know, the specialized pictures, videos, audio notes, et cetera, makes it easier for them to execute their maintenance tasks. Having it in space, right? Because again, it's spatialized, it's it's augmented content. Um, makes it easier for them to work hands-free. I don't know how much you guys know about pods, but the torch itself um, is about 40 pounds and costs $250,000. So it's not a great piece of equipment to have to set down, pick up, move around, and flip through manuals with when you're trying to work with it. There's a stand that they can put it on um, to kind of help with the, the weight of it but it's still a pretty heavy piece of equipment that's kind of hard for them to maneuver. So just for them having the content, you know, in their 3D space um, and being able to just kind of look up, see it, work on, you know, work on their maintenance task, it makes it a lot easier them, easier for them to just execute their maintenance task and setting to have to go back to a paper manual and flip back and forth. Um, so that's, was really a long-winded answer. And if you have follow-up questions, again, you can always email me and I can send you some of our publications that, that talk about it. But great question, thank you. Ms. Woods, Rebecca Woods, she's with us today and she's uh, logistics management for a PEO carrier. We'd love to hear from you in this collaboration and uh, how you see extract being used beyond this initial application. Hi, yes, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Yeah, no, I um, thank you, to Dr. Claypool and the entire design interactive team, and of course, um, Dr. Perez. I, um, the truth is that I think my boss and I both understand that we're not going to be able to procure every single piece of technical training equipment that we would love to buy. And um, the Navy's going digital. That's the reality. <laughs> it's going to, you know, we're going into a virtual training environment, maybe not, not for everything, but um, <clears throat> uh, for, for most things, we are trying to move to a digital training environment. And, and I think that the extract software, it, it plays right into that. Um, it's the future of training. It's where we're going. Um, I think, you know, as Dr. Claypool was saying, with pods or even the advanced weapons elevators, um, we just can't, we don't have the budget to buy a full pod unit or a full elevator. We need to have some digital virtual environment solutions. And um, so, yeah, I am definitely behind Extract and, the, you know, the new, the save um, kind of environment that we're all going to in the Navy. Um, and I appreciate it. I think that the Design Interactive team is doing wonderful work, and um, I truly appreciate them and Neil and, and the Cape Henry team for, for putting this all together and collaborating. I know this was long before I came on board. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I truly appreciate it. We, we need it now more than ever because, as I said, we know that we just can't buy everything we'd love to buy to teach the sailors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of the questions that was submitted ahead of time, which I thought was 
an insightful question was about how contractors, companies, many of whom are, are on this presentation, how do they fit into this? Because so much knowledge and subject matter expertise is embedded in the personnel and the contractors and companies working on these solutions. Have any discussion about that? Uh, yeah, is that directed to me? I'm sorry. Yeah, for, <laughs> for any of you, sorry, I didn't didn't designate anyone, but yes, probably you, Miss Woods, would be best. Um, yeah, we so we work, you know, as you as, as Dr. Clay Cole um, already mentioned that we we have the triad, and and so yeah, the, the contracting support will definitely be um, a a big portion of that. Um, the you know the HII has a lot of the the source data and the, the relationship um, with the vendors, and so we will we'll need that data in order to um, kind of put these maintenance procedures you know into a virtual environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, we we do have to work hand in hand um, on. You know, it's kind of a system by system, case by case perspective, and um, but but a lot of the the whole mechanical equipment on board is is um, you know HII is the lead for that equipment, and so we rely on their vendor relationships to help populate that maintenance data that we need to go into extract. Thank you. One of the key questions that we wanted to get to in this conversation is what next? You've got this really highly functional collaboration. There's so much need and so much potential for Extract as a solution, as a platform, Design Interactive, Cape Henry, PEO Carrier, all of you have needs beyond this initial application. Perhaps Dr. Stanley, if you would, uh, or Tori would take a, a whack at that first and where do you see this going for you as a company? Well, first, I think Neil's back on, and we haven't heard from Neil, so I'm going oh, to give Neil an opportunity to, to chime okay. in. Okay. Neil, are you with us? I think he's having audio problems still, it sounds like. Can you hear me? That's unfortunate. There you are. Yes, sir. Thank you. Finally. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I reverted to the, the phone so I could talk to you. <laughs> Thank um, you, sir. So, uh, repeat if you would the question real quickly while I was reconnecting. Yes, sir. I just would love to hear from Cape Henry and from you how what you got out of this collaboration, how it's impacted mm -hmm. what as a company you're doing where you might take this product and solution and use it. You mentioned a couple of things the other day when we were speaking and I just think that the trickle down effect or the long-term effect of these kind of collaborations is a really important part of this conversation. So from several different directions, um, how does it affect Cape Henry? I'll start with most directly. Um, like a lot of other things we have, we have, systems where if we lose somebody's knowledge, we would be having to regenerate that knowledge. And the CART units that, that uh, Dr. Claypool mentioned earlier are carrier advanced reconfigurable training systems. They are purpose built 53 foot training environments. And the care and feeding of those is not something that we had as an expertise before we started. And so as we develop knowledge of these, as we work with the manufacturer on how do I do the maintenance procedures, how do I do the information systems procedures, I want to be able to capture that so that as people leave, people come to the company, I can share and replicate that knowledge um, from the experienced to the new folks. So the, the concept of extract was certainly attractive to us uh, when we first got introduced to it. Um, from a larger perspective, um, in a past life, long before I came to Cape Henry, um, I ran training and organizational development at a 2,500-person manufacturing plant for 11 years. And I saw the workforce 
come and go as people retired, new people came in. The ability to pass the knowledge down was something that we saw as being critical, but at the time didn't have a good tool for it. Um, prior to that, I was a surface warfare officer, retired Navy. Same problem that we have today for the Ford that we had on the ships in those days. How do I capture that old salt's knowledge and pass it on properly to the new person, not the shortcuts that may get somebody hurt, not the, yeah, they told you to do it this way, but you don't have to. But the real honest to goodness, how do I um, make things happen? And so from multiple levels, when this concept first came up through Dr. Perez and through Kelly Schneider, then at PEO Carriers, where they collaborated, Dr. Prez having the SIBRA project to look at the validity of and the effectiveness of ARVR, Kelly Schneider at the time being the lead for the CVN 78 carrier uh, training programs, having a new ship class with significant new systems that were not taught anywhere else in the Navy, and that when that initial crew, those plank owners that brought the ship to life, left, we weren't going to have a good way to refill the knowledge bank. We were building courses, we were building schools, but something that I could put on board in situ, especially for those, you do it once a year maintenance procedures, or you do it only when something breaks, and the last time anyone had to do it was three crews ago. Um, Kelly saw that benefit in application. And so what happened was Dr. Perez pushing through O&R, Kelly through, pushing through PEO carriers, said this is a mutually beneficial approach. He grabbed the triad that, that Dr. Claypool talked about earlier that he had working already on Ford training and development stuff, and he brought us into the picture. Um, Cape Henry is a conduit for the design interactive folks going to the ship, being able to get the right ship folks. Um, part of what we use is one of the guys from CACI who's actually our onboard the ship daily liaison so if we needed to get a particular person or get, get de design interactive with a person, we could do that. Huntington Ingalls with a lot of the technical documentation, a lot of the technical manual. So we took the strength of the triad that Kelly had developed and married it up with the O&R project in support of what Design Interactive was doing. And, and I think it's been beneficial, and I think it will continue to expand in its benefit. I'll take a break. Um, jump on to, to what Neil's saying because it, it really, really does take a village. And, and I hope you guys have been Im impressed that like I personally have found this just so, so enjoyable and honorable to work with this team. But what Neil is saying, he really, they really did take the best of everyone, the best that everyone had to give and brought us together to really ensure that this could be developed the right way very effectively and efficiently. One of the collaborations we we really haven't touched on um, was that in part with Kate Henry, with Huntington Ingalls, and with that CARTS unit. So like I was mentioning, um, some of these systems are really, really new. One of the systems on pods can um, actually can't be used while the, while the ship is in, in port. It can only be used while it's at sea. So of course we can't use extract with it right now because um, because it's not deployed on on the ship for use um, while they're out at sea yet. We're still kind of in that process. So what Huntington Ingalls, Cape Henry Associates, and and Carts did for us is they said, "Hey, we've got the Carts trailer. Hey, we'll get you know IC one DS from the Center of Excellence, or we'll bring some sailors off the ship for for you to work with." And hey, HII, we've actually been developing um, 3D printed materials that, that mimic these, these POTS components. So you don't have to worry about a $250,000 torch. We'll give you a $50 3D printed one for you to use. Um, and we can show how the knowledge can be extracted with these 3D printed materials. And it works the same exact way as if we were using them on the ship in the real environment. So it was just this very, very nice, simplistic but elegant collaboration between the three of us to say, look at all these emerging technologies, right? We've got the AR components. We're gonna to bring we're gonna bring in the sailors. We're gonna use this high velocity learning environment to extract the knowledge, which has um, you know, configurations like a lab environment. 
And we're gonna take this new cool 3D printed capability, 3D print actual parts and, and extract the knowledge and practice the knowledge on those. Um, so it was this really, really nice, elegant collaboration kind of, uh, and it's more of a recent one. We've been doing that one for, uh, I don't know, like a Neil, uh, like a year Neil, does that sound right? Like the last year or so. Um, but the point being that all of these folks really do come together for us. You know, Neil coordinates everything and then answers all of my questions, all of them. Like, Neil, when you were a sailor, what did you do in this situation? Like, how did you guys come against this? Or how did you solve these problems, you know, back when you were doing it? And he's always this great fountain of information of like, hey, here's how we solve these problems. Here's how they're being solved today. And you can support that problem solving. And then also, you need access to sailors that are on the ship right now. No problem. We're going to call CACI. There are liaison. They'll cart you around everywhere you need to go. Um, and they really do. They, they take us every place that we need to be, every part of the ship, absolutely no problem, and really ensure that we are working with the right people. Um, so it's just, it's been, again, just a very, very wonderful collaboration on all sides of the fence and many, many different areas outside of just simply how do we elicit all of this good knowledge. Thank you, Dr. Claypool. We have about four minutes left. It, uh, Dr. Stanny, anyone else want to chime in with uh, one or two more comments before we close it out? Hey, Caroline, this coop here, just uh, as we talk about collaboration, I know you're getting ready to probably close this out. Mm -hmm. But as you see, they did a great job, you know, working within the system to do this and get the collaboration done. And this is a hope that the tech road will help us do this here, right here in Orlando internally, to make these connections for us. And so we can work together with small industry, the DOD, and the different services to make sure we're successful in solving the needs of our soldiers, sailmen, and guardians. Can't forget about the guardians now, the space force is out there. Right. Right. Um, but, um, that'll be great as we do that and the tech road starts coming alive and we can uh, do this joint collaboration together. Coop clearly read my notes about my closing comments because those my comments were going to be to really share just really that same thought. A couple of the questions that were submitted ahead of time were, is the Tech Grove intended to foster these kinds of collaborations, connections, creative opportunities, and is it open? for everybody. And the answer to both of those questions is yes. We can't tell you exactly what we're going to be doing over the coming weeks and months because we are working actively with not TSD and the other Team Orlando services to identify what they would like us as their partner to, to do for them and what kinds of activities to stand up. This is an example. Yesterday, we had the inaugural Tech Grove Juice Bar, where we had a chance for anyone that would like to virtually meet with representatives from, in this case, it was not TSD, small business officer, the SBIR, STTR manager, the tech transfer, ORTA uh, director over there, and Diana is the outreach coordinator and tech bridge director. And we will have that event every month as well. That will be on our LinkedIn page and eventually our, our web portal when we get that up and running soon. And it is an open space once we get it officially open. It's not classified space. It is intended to be a, a very dynamic, engaging environment with uh, a lot of things going on. The slides from today's session are in the handouts section. So be sure you check that. Feel free to download those. We'll also post them on the Central Florida Tech Grove LinkedIn page. You'll be able to access them there as well if you would like. We'd love to hear from you about, was this helpful? Was this insightful? Are there other types of insights that you'd like us to consider providing information that you don't get elsewhere, perhaps, as it relates to modeling simulation and training in, in human performance? We want to provide you helpful information that will help you better understand and more effectively engage with the Team Orlando 
Tech Grove community. With that, we will let you, you go. We're going to close this out. Our next Tech Grove Connect will be March 11th, a month from now, same time, same venue, thanks to NTSA and their great support. With that, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks for the opportunity, Caroline.